we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 45. Steve Lovell. Steve, thanks for joining us, mate. No problem, Dan. Pleasure. Great to have you on, mate. I said I was um, you just slightly before I remember playing, uh, going to watch me all. So I've done some research this morning and I've got like, five, six pages. It's a fascinating time at the club. 1983 to 1987, 146 games and 43 goals. Um, joined from Crystal Palace. How did that come about? Uh, yeah, um, I was at Palace um, and played in every position, really. They had played about 70, 80 games from. I uh, had loads of managers there, which is um, unbelievable. I think I must have had about seven or eight managers there, from Terry Venables all the way to Dario Grady. So it, it was loads of, of people we played under. And um, I came to a, a, a one season, I, I, uh, I was midfield at Palace, but um, I was doing well under Alan Mullery. And um, we had an injury crisis at the club and we were looking for a left back. Now, I can't even stand on my left foot, never mind kick with it. So, so you can imagine that the, the time I had there uh, wasn't the best of times. So then um, it was time to move on. And George had moved, George Graham had moved from Palace to Millwall as manager uh, in January. And early February, um, he came and um, signed me mm. and signed me as a fullback. Um, so that's how I got there. Um, yeah, back in all in all them years ago. Yeah, very interesting. I say lots of managers. I didn't was so George Graham was the manager of uh, Crystal Palace, was he? No, because he um, he he ran uh, the reserves oh, he, okay. at, at that time. I did, he was coming to the end of his career, so he was player and a coach there. But I signed under Malcolm Allison. Malcolm Allison signed me at uh, Crystal Palace. Then there was um, Terry Venables. Then it was Ernie Wally. Then it was Steve Kemba. Then it was Dario Grady, then then Ernie Wally came back again. So there was loads and loads of uh, people I played for, and um, uh, it wasn't very um, sort of uh, convincing, really, the times that we had there. We, we got relegated from the Premier League or League One, as it was then, and stayed in the Championship, or League Two, as it, as it was then, for a few years. So that's where I played most of, most of the games. Yeah, an interesting one from your time at Palace. I don't like to, obviously, as a Millwall fan channel, dip into Palace too much, but you had two <laughs> loans as a Palace youngster. One at Stockport, which I'm not fussed about talking about, but one at Memphis <laughs> Rogues. How did that come about, going to Memphis yeah. on loan as a youngster? Yeah, it was uh, it was weird, actually, because, um, like, Terry Venables, he liked, I think, uh, what, what he saw in me, but he couldn't get me into the team at the time, and I was only 18 or 19. And uh, he said, do you fancy going out to uh, America and playing uh, Charlie Cook and Eddie McCready, the old Chelsea boys? They were running it. And um, Neil Smiley, who was another um, Palace player, he said, the two of you can go out and play for the summer. So it was, um, it was a no-brainer, really. I thought, well, it was a great opportunity. I was only, well, I was 18 when I went out there. I had my 19th birthday out there. And it was great. It was a great uh, experience and playing against all the... Uh, the so-called names of the day, like it was Pele and and uh, Gerd Muller and all people like that were playing back in the, in the day. So it was it was a fantastic experience for me. I'm playing in all the big um, uh, big American um, football stadiums, which was fine. And it was weird because obviously they 60, 70,000 seat of stadiums and you're playing in front of two or 3,000 people. So it was it's a bit like now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like the Premier League now, yeah, uh, but it was it was a good experience, and um, you know, on the field and off the field, it was uh, one I never forget. <laughs> Imagine, man! So you you was born in Swansea originally, so for a young Welsh boy to come to London was big enough, but then to go to mm. London to Memphis on loan, you must have been mm. pinching yourself at times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Um, you know, I, I left Swansea. I say at, at uh, 15, 16, signed for Palace as an apprentice professional. And then um, I had seven good years there, great years there. I really did. We won the FA Youth Cup twice uh, with all um, the, the team of the 80s, as we were so-called. And then um, obviously going to, to America was um, was brilliant. My family came out. They came out and stayed with me in my my apartment. And, um, you know, they get, they looked after me in, in America. It was fantastic. And um, But then I came back and signed for Stockport to get league football. And that's where I met my wife. So... So everything's done for a reason, isn't it? <laughs> the one good thing to come <laughs> to Stockport ever, I suppose, that would be. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. The only good thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eventually you make your way to Millwall, 83, 84 season. You play 57 games. You score 10 goals. Now, 
as I said, you scored a 43 and 146, which is good enough as it is. It's just short one in three, I think. My maths isn't great. But what no. people don't know, which I didn't know until someone commented yesterday, so thanks to the person that did do that on the social media, one of the older Millwall fans than me, you didn't actually start out as a striker at Millwall. No, George signed me um, as a fullback. Um, I, I was a bit of a utility player at, at uh, Palace, and as I, you know, that's why I left really because obviously because I could play in every position. They stuck me at left back, uh, and as I say, it wasn't the best position for me, and that was my downfall at the end of the day. But then again, I would never have played for Millwall if, if I had stayed in Millwall in midfield. So, as I say, things are done for a reason, and uh, George signed me as a fullback, uh, and I started out as a fullback. Um, but then we had a, an injury crisis um, up front at, uh, at Millwall where Dean Neal was injured and then I think Kevin Bremner was injured. Um, so I, I thought on one Friday said to George as a, as a laugh, you know, I'll, I'll play up front for you, George, tomorrow. And he sort of went here yeah, like that. And um, so I came in the next day, we were playing Brentford at home, the team sheet went up and there I was number nine. So um, I went out and we beat them 2-1 and I scored two. Um, so it started from there and, and went on and, and scored uh, 13 in the next 11 games, uh, consecutive games, which um, is a, a bit of a record, I think. And um, uh, it came to an end. I remember it came to an end at um, uh, Bradford on a Tuesday night. Uh, but George stuck me back in midfield and uh, I never, never forgive him for that because that would have kept the record going, but I never scored in that one. So, but it was, um, no, it was great. And um, as I said, I stayed up front then um, and played um, most of my uh, career up front. I mean, you said it a bit, t- bit tongue in cheek, but was you aware you could bang a few in if need be before you went up front? Yeah, when we won, uh, when we won the, well, coming through all of my schoolboys football back in Swansea, I was an attacking midfield player. You know, I always got goals. Uh, but I went to when I went to Palace, as I said, I, the people could see I could play in different roles, and that's where I started playing at right back and in midfield. Um, but I always had an eye for a goal, even at full back, I would always get forward and try and get on the end of things. So it was, um, it was, uh, you know, it, it was nice to be given a chance by George to play up front. And um, luckily enough, I, I played up front with some good centre forwards, i.e., Kevin Bremner, John Fashnu, um, and uh, had great. Um, sort of great uh, partnerships with them and uh, we helped each other. Yes, well, I've got my notes here. I was going to ask you what the strike partnership was that gave you the opportunity to go up front. And I think it was um, Dean Neal and, and Kevin Bremner. And of course, you had, you had a young yeah. Teddy Sheridan as well. They're playing five games off the bench that season. Yeah, Teddy <laughs> Teddy was brilliant. He was a young lad. And um, he, even in them days, you could see he had the ability. And, uh, and Teddy was very, very, um, and still is, I think, a uh, very strong-minded person. Uh, and um, he was brilliant to uh, to see in training and and in the games and obviously the career he's had it's just showed what a what a great talent he is mm-hmm. uh, he was and still is and um, uh, he's a great lad as well and uh, you know I, I got on really well with Teddy. Mm-hmm. Number two Millwall long term players would have been um, Alan McCleary and Keith Stevens. They just seem to be ever present. Yeah. They would have been young players at that point, very young. Yeah. Yeah, they were part of the side as well, Alan McCleary and, and Rhino. Um, yeah, again, they, they were great to have around. It was a good team. And one thing with George as a manager and a coach, he, he knew how to get the best out of us. And um, that's what he did. He certainly did that. And um, it was great to, to be a part of it uh, with them, them young players. Mm. So you, you went up front, you scored 10 goals this season. It's a really strange one because we finished ninth in the league, but the goals... Anton Otolowski, I think that is, scored nine. Yeah. You got 10. Yeah. Brem's got 16. And Dean Neal yeah. got 19. But we only finished ninth yeah. in the table. I, I, I think we had a bad start, I think. I think it was a really bad start of the season, but we had a good end to it, I think. Mm. And that, uh, I think that's, that, that's what... Um, obviously, the defence wasn't very good then. <laughs> we, 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 we scored a load, but we let a lot in. Yeah. Um, so my mate, I don't know if Paul Sanson was in goal, the goalkeeper, my, my good mate, so uh, he won't be, he won't uh, thank me for saying that, but um, <laughs> it must probably was Wellesy. It was Wellesy in goals, was probably it was his fault. <laughs> and walks, walks is at the back. He got no chance. He walks is at the back. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's been on there, so you can't dig you out now. He's been on. You get free run on him. Oh, that's so I good. I can have a go at him then. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. two games I've picked out from that season. They they're both 
cup games, uh, different cups, completely yeah. different opposite ends of the spectrum. A 2-1 home win in the FA Cup against Dartford, for one, in front of a crowd of yeah. nearly, nearly 5,000, which was quite a good crowd for that. You know, we, we, for those who don't know, we was in what would now be the lower reaches of League One at this point. Um, and George yeah. turned it around, got us to a ninth finish. And um, yeah. so the crowds are very down, sort of three, 4,000, but nearly 5,000 turned up to see us beat Dartford 2-1 at the Den. Mm. Do you know, I, I, I can't remember that one, Dan. I really can't. It's a long time ago. And uh, um, I remember most games, but I just can't remember that one. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Is, well, is there a significance score. with that one, Dan? I didn't score, did I? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Another one you didn't score in that I found, okay, is because I looked mm. it up and it was nearly 14,000 at the den there this day. We lost 5-1 at home to West Bromwich Albion, who then would have been a Premier League side. Oh, God. Yeah. Remember that? And yeah, you, I, yeah, you know, I remember had, that. Had, sorry, they had Martin Yo. Remember Martin Yo, the old Spurs man. Yeah. He was was that? Was that? Was that at West Brom? Well, that, that might have been at West Brom. Oh, was it at West Brom? Was it? We, it, it? Yeah, it was at West Brom because we played them in the first leg at, at home, and we we beat them three nil. We beat them three nil at home, okay. and it was a two legged thing. And, and we went to West Brom, and they beat us five one. We beat us 5-1. I remember the the, the, the the end at West Brom was absolutely packed, packed full of uh, Millwall supporters. And um, in the end, I remember at the end, when they the fifth one went in, I remember saying to Walt, I'm, saying, I'm thinking, what's the score? Or Mickey Nutton, I might have said. I said, how many have they scored? I don't know what the score was. We thought we still, we had, it was going to extra time, but they, I think they they murdered us that day, 5-1. Yeah, I remember that. So you beat remember them, that one. You beat them three new arm at the den. Yeah. Yeah, we beat them three. I'm pretty sure it was three 0 at home at the Den in the first leg, and we went up there and we lost um, lost five one. It was five one, and we lost five four in aggregate. I'm pretty sure it was. Pretty sure. Right. So let's move on. I'm sure you remember plenty about this next season. It's the 84, 85 season. Of course, we win promotion, come and run us up to Bradford, and you finished top scorer with 27 goals. Mm. Definitely some many yeah. as a striker at that point. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's amazing, really, because. Um, I think that was the year we had a good run in the FA Cup as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was it, it was a fantastic year. That that was, and I remember we played I think Plymouth the last game of the season when uh, when we got uh, promoted. I, I didn't play in that when I was injured, um, but it was yeah, it was really good, brilliant season. And and you know the supporters, you know it's nothing like it's nothing like the Millwall supporters. I don't care anybody says that, you know they were they, they even away from home the games that we used to go to is. is you were a goal up before you started with the crowd and the supporters. They, they, they were just a fantastic, um, fantastic crowd to play in front of. Was they on board with you straight away, the fans? Obviously, as you come from Crystal Palace, was that an issue at the beginning or? Uh, no, I don't think so. I I, 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 I can't remember them having a go at me um, when I was playing at right back. So, um, and obviously when I started scoring the goals, they were quite happy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 there's a few... <laughs> There's a few games I remember that the opposition didn't get give get much uh, uh, of an applause from from them, but um, you know that's the way they are, and um, it's like anything. It, it, it's, it's sometimes it's tongue in cheek and a bit of fun and a bit of banter, uh, but uh, you know that they 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 can get on get at play, especially the opposition, and I think they did that a few of the, the plays that we played against. Yeah, it's, it's an unbelievable story, mate. To go from you know he's already a, a good established pro. But to go from, to, let's say, a versatile player that predominantly played at fullback to now scoring 27 goals, was you getting attention from other clubs now thinking, hey, we might buy this guy, as a, you know, you're now a striker? Um, yeah, there was there was talk, talk back in the day um, and there was clubs looking like from the, the League One or a Premiership, wherever it was, Tottenham were having a look uh, and a couple of other, other, other sides. But to be honest, I, whenever they came to... Um, um, to watch, uh, I most probably didn't perform like I, like I, I could have done, and even to you know, if, if I'm being bluntly honest, you know, I I don't think I was ever hundred um, percent fit, never. You know, when you look at the players now, and and see how fit they are, I would love to have played now, and and got myself to a fitness levels where I could do because I I obviously had the ability to score goals yeah. and. And to do other things, but the fitness side was, was was the one thing that let me down. I think. Yeah, you say that, and and I understand what you're saying, but also on my notes, you played 57 games that season. 
You try, you try yeah. and find me a professional footballer now that don't roll over and go, my leg hurts, I need to have a Saturday off, Gabba. <laughs> 57 games. That's yeah, a, but... A lot of games, mate. Yeah, it is. It is. It is, Dan. It's a lot of games. And um, again, most probably that's why uh, I played them many games because I, I didn't run around too much in the games. <laughs> I just scored goals. <laughs> I, I let Kevin Bremer and John Fashnu do all that. And then I just tap them in. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, um, it's a weird one. It's a weird one. But I, I just felt that, you know, I, I, if I had that, that, that little bit of more sharpness, I think I could have moved on and gone a little bit higher again. And maybe clubs looking at me could see that. Um, that, that was my only, um, my only uh, downside, really. Oh, you didn't think that was just a reflection of the era and the fitness in general? You think you, uh, you went out your way to not do enough? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, most probably. But, you know, you got away with it. I was scoring goals and I thought, oh, I'm all right. You know, I'm scoring goals. I didn't have anybody like they do now. Like me, when I managed at Gillingham, there was uh, uh, Tom Eaves at, at Gillingham. You know, there's, I knew he was a good player, but I knew I could get more out of him. So I would give him extra work. I would give him extra finishing. I would go and do extra training with him yeah. to make sure that he got to that level. We didn't have that in the in the day. It was, it was down to us to do it. Um, and perhaps, you know, we didn't, you know, it, it, the... the the sort of uh, era that it was then was um, all right. We've done our training. Let's go and have a game of golf or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's um, and 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 I think now you know that, that it's different. You know, financially as well now, it's it's massive. You know, the, the the game and going back there. You know, if if I was twenty seven goals in a season, I'd be I'd be a multi millionaire. Uh, whereas back in the day, you're earning four five hundred pound a week. Well, so, that's, you scored you know, twenty seven um, goals now in, in a season. That's it. You you be gone. Tell me to put you. Oh, exactly. You, you last yeah, you made for life. Yeah. Nah, yeah, you made for life. Yeah, you made for life. So, you know, it does change. And, and then most probably because of that, people want to look after you more because you're more of a, um, you're more of an incentive for them, more of a uh, commodity. So you've got to look, be looked after because if you can, they can get the best out of you, they, they most probably sell you on for, for big money. But back in the day, it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, as bad. And it was down to the individuals to go and do their, Work. I'm not saying I wasn't fit, but I could have been fitter. I could have been fitter. So yep. that, that's my only um, my only downside, really. You scored 27 goals. That is not bad at all. And there was a lot of goals. People whining from everywhere with goals. I, sorry, I don't remember some of these players, so you'll have to help me out. Steve Lowndes got seven. Yeah. Dave Cusack got yeah. eight. Brem's got another 13. Dean Neal got 14. And you were 27. Yeah. That's something in this day and yeah. age we dream of as fans at seeing at the den. Yeah, well, I say you know, as two your two top strikers there is is like forty goals between them, you know, uh, that's quite a lot for 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 the season. Um, yeah, it was you know it, it was it was great times and and the cup cup games as well were fantastic. You know, the Chelsea's um, and the Aston Villas and Leicester's that we went on and then the Luton one. So no, it was a really really good time and um, you know George and Theo, you know Theo was was a brilliant part of that as well and. Um, you know, they were a great partnership, the two of them, George and Theo. What was their partnership like? Was it like a good cop, bad cop? Or Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, George was very... Um, he'd look after you. If you did the, 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 the work for George, he'd look after you. Um, and Theo then was just um, just a, a, a great lad to have around the boys. He kept us all buzzing and uh, he kept us all together. Uh, but George was a disciplinarian. He, he really was disciplined in a good way. And to be fair, I've taken a lot of his traits into my management, you know, the discipline fight, the side of it, not letting people get away with things, which, you know, you've got to do. Uh, and it's, that, again, is more coming to the, into the football in the world now, in the game. You know, you've got to be disciplined, the timings of everything, doing things properly. Um, and his training was brilliant. And, and Theo sort of, they, they worked brilliant together, the two of them. They really did. So we finished second that season which was a build on finishing ninth the season before. What do you think helped us push on that little bit further and get promotion that season? I think it's the, it was just um, the, the, the work that we did on the training ground. I think George was fantastic at that, you know, working on the shape and the understanding of, of everybody's roles and responsibilities uh, and giving us belief in ourselves. I think that was a massive thing. You know, when we, when I first went to, uh, to Millwall, we had to beat Chesterfield, I think, the last game of the season to stay up. And George, we, we, he had 13 games to do it. And I think we only lost one in 13 games and stayed up. 
So he got he'd got together a group of players that really wanted to do it, and the, the, you know the the discipline and the the camaraderie was there. Um, and then during that season when we pushed on, then I think it was because of that the training. He worked hard in training. We all worked hard. He had his shape, and he drilled us. He drilled us so that we knew exactly what we what our roles and responsibilities were on, on the Saturday. Yeah, because I was looking, but you didn't make that many more signings. There's a little influx of youth coming through, but he brought in Les Briley and he brought in John Fashion, who were only two notable signings. Um, yeah. yeah, obviously Les would later go on to captain the club to, to to promotion to the top flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Les was brilliant. He came in and he was a, a little workhorse, and uh, you know he, he kept us. He's a, a true captain and uh, kept us all going. Um, and Fash is Fash, you know. Fash was. He was brilliant for me. He, you know, he was he was a foil for me. He used to get bashed up every week, and um, he'd give it out as well, though. And, and you know, and which made it brilliant for me. And we had a great um, we had a great um, sort of uh, relationship on and off the field. And um, yeah, he, he was a really good um, acquisition for the for the club, and did uh, did it well. Did this well. What was he like? For, he, you know, what fascinates me more so as well because of my age. He obviously, as a kid, I remember him playing for the Crazy Gang and then presenting the Gladiators. And he always seemed to have <laughs> eccentric. What was he like fashion and off the pitch? So you got on quite well with him. Yeah, he was brilliant. He was uh, so quiet. He was so like um, he was so quiet, you know. But but in a with the way he talked. But then we used to call him Johnny Quick Quote because he was always be in the papers. That any paper he'd go to and he'd try and get himself in there. Uh, and and that's why he got on the gladiators. You know, he, he's he, you know he's a real good, nice person. Uh, but he, he could talk. He could talk really well. And and um, as I say, they, they loved him on the gladiators. My kids loved him on the gladiators. So, um, but it was mad to see him. And you know, we, we years after that, we um, when he was on the gladiators, I'd, I'd I'd gone like from it. And I was down uh, watching a game of football with my. My uh, my sons down um, down in dash down the road in Kent, and um, I could see this figure across the field with his coat on, and I went flipping heck, that don't look like Fash, and I thought, oh, what would he be in a field down in in Kent like watching a game of football? So the more he moved, I could see that's definitely Fash. So I said to my son Nick, I went, go go on, just run run over, run over him and go Aruga in front of him, see what he does, All right. So my Nick, he's only about, I don't know, 10 or something at the time. He's run across and he's gone, Ruga. And he, he took his hood off and it was fast. It was fast and it was unbelievable. He was watching his cousin playing for Wimbledon against Sittingbourne at the time, a, a centre of excellence game. And I went over and had a great chat with him and that, and it was great to see him. But he hadn't changed. He hadn't changed at all. He's just, you know, he's just a nice, nice fella. Yeah. Um, and he was, a, he was a great player to play with. Yeah, you said he was, a, he was a very good foil for you in the team. So at this point, when you score 27, you're the top scorer. As I said, goals weighing in from everywhere. So we've got you, Fash, Dean Neal and Brems. And also a young, yeah. a young Teddy Sheridan had scored five the season before. He didn't get a single yeah. game this season, Teddy, because he just obviously couldn't get near it. So what was the main, no. I mean, out of those four, what was the main strike partnership for you? I, I think, I think it, it, it changed a lot because I think a lot of times I went into midfield because I could play a, a different role, George could, you know, he knew there was goals coming from us. Mm. So he would play Kev and um, D Neil or Fash, and then I would play just in behind or, or whatever. So it was, it was one of them that or uh, um, Brems would play wider, or it, it was just he just used it, utilized it the, the best he could. But he, he tried to get us all, all on the field at the same time because he knew, he knew there was a threat to goals, mm. and and the majority of the time he did get us all on there, but. Um, but yeah, it was just, I don't know, like it, it, obviously we had people who could create things for us, which is a big thing. You know, yeah. you talk about Anton, Anton Lukowski, you know, I used to take yeah. penalties and he, he used to, honest, fall over in the box and give me so many penalties. He was brilliant. Yeah. Nine penalties. <laughs> nine, pen was it nine, nine penalties. Nine penalties. Anton. Yeah. 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 He's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Because he was a gymnast. Yeah. Anton was a gymnast. And he'd go in in a box, and anybody go near him, he'd dive. Honestly, he'd do a double somersault, like it would be just all good. And he'd land on his back, and the ref would go off oh, penalty, and everybody's going, "I've touched it, I've touched it." But yeah. you know, he'd, he'd get no chance of getting a penalty these days with his VAR and that. But he used to get loads back in the day. Loads. Yeah, nine, nine penalty. I was looking through the mill stats this morning. Love all yeah. penalty. Love all penalty. Some games, two penalties. I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. We always complain no, the referees' decisions in this day and age at Millwall, but definitely then we did. Yeah, exactly. And and the thing is, that's why he used to do. You know, he used to do it. He used to do it brilliantly. He was uh, he was a little gymnast. He was, but um, no, he, he he was he was great to have him and Dave Cusack were very close. And Dave used to get a lot of goals as well from centre half. So it was um, yeah, it was decent decent team. Yes, it's, um, it's like, obviously I don't remember it, but it's exciting me listening to it. And he's saying you, you tried to get all four of you on the pitch. Brems would play wide, you and mm. Flash up top. Dean yeah. Neal scored a lot of goals. Anton yeah. doing uh, double pipe backflips and getting penalties. It's definitely <laughs> um, a brilliant work from George to, to get together that side that was in danger of slipping into the bottom tier at one point. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the thing with him. I think George knew, uh, he, I think, you know, he learned a lot of Terry Venables. Terry... Um, was obviously at Palace with George and and uh, I think George uh, got a lot of things off Terry and obviously he had his own stamp on things but I, I think from a, a coaching perspective he knew exactly how he wanted the team he played basic 4-4-2 he didn't it, it wasn't anything stupid like a 3-5-2 or 4-3-3 or diamond it was just 4-4-2 two wide people getting the balls in the box and people going to attack and attacking and attacking from um, the wide areas so it was yeah it was it was really good Really good. Um, so, we, we got promotion. You missed the final couple of games, I believe, due to injury. But from that season, um, winning the league and scoring goals, so many as you did. Any personal highlights, any games that stick out for you? And what was the celebrations yeah. like? Yeah. Well, the, the Chelsea game, I think, in the FA Cup, when we went over there and beat them 3-2 um, um, on a Tuesday night. And uh, I scored two goals in that. Fash scored one, I scored two. And um, I remember David Speedy uh, missing a penalty in the last last kick of the game. And I know Dave, I played golf with him and um, we've been in, out in Spain, played a lot of times. And I do rib him about that, to be honest. And uh, he, uh, we, we went on and got, um, we beat Aston Villa of that season, Leicester at home. Um, and then we played Luton in the quarterfinal at um, Kenilworth Road with that, you know, notorious night with all the, the trouble um, and lost, uh, obviously, 1-0. Um, and that was a, a, you know, we had to go off the pitch, come back on, and then Steen scored um, uh, one goal at, at, at the end of the game and knocked us out. But yeah, they, they were they were good times. The, the cup cup games and the celebrations, and especially after the Chelsea, uh, I think we went down about the old Kent Road that night, and I don't think I'd, I'd come home. I don't think my wife saw me till the middle of the next day. <laughs> Chelsea, the force they are now. Then was they that same sort of ilk? Um. Yeah, they were. They was they were in the top league, and it yeah. was tough. You know, they it was a, they were a good side. They were expected to beat us. Basically, they were expected to beat us. But we had beaten them, I think, two one as well in the League Cup that year as well at home. And I scored a, a header in that game at the Den. Um, so yeah, I think they, they thought we might have had a chance. But um, yeah, I scored two. I scored a header and a penalty again. Um, but um, yeah, we beat them 3-2. And then, as I say, the less, the Luton game was the one that was disappointing, really. Mm. But um, no, it was really good, really good uh, celebrations, really good nights. And uh, many a night on the old Kent Road we used to have after the game. Which was about winning the league. Where did you get the trophy? Was that been presented at the Den at one point? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think it was, um, I think we had a, a play of the Urdu and, um, that night. And I think um, we all went and got it. But... Uh, um, I think it would have been done at the end of the game, the, you know, the celebrations and that, was, all the fans come on. And the big thing with the Millwall supporters that I found, and I found out when we played Chesterfield, the last game of the season, that to stay up, you know, when the final whistle went, like, I I only came off the pitch with my, my underpants on. Everything else went. The shirt, the shorts, the boots, the shin pads, everything. And I literally walked in the dressing room like well, without anything on, nothing on. Supporters just take everything. So when we played Plymouth, um, the, the boys were old. Paul Sanson was up the other end. So he had to make sure that the referee told him when the whistle was going so he could make a run for it because otherwise he'd have nothing left on. But we, um, we, we, yeah, we got promotion that year and it was, uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. Brilliant. So then so we're promoted back into what would now be the championship, the 1985-86 yeah. uh, season. We finished mm. You are again the top scorer, scoring 19 goals in 52 games and 13 mm. for Fash. And by this point, mm -hmm. um, Brems had left the club and Dean Neal had left the club. So yeah. it was you and Fash as the, as the cemented up, up front pairing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it it, it came um, obviously the year before we we done it, but then th this year was the year that that we sort of the the, the time that we we really got together and and started to um, uh, get ourselves going. And I think Fash, I think he went to Wimbledon uh, this year. I think I think they came in for him, um, and uh, that's where he went. But um, you know, not before he had he helped me along with um, a lot of my assists and and the way that we played. Uh, together, which uh, which was which was great. Uh, it was it was fantastic. Dean Neil and, and Brempton left the club at this point, which surprised me a bit. I know he steps up another level, but they scored a lot of goals over the previous two seasons. Were you surprised to see those two leave the club? Yeah, yeah. But you know, football is football, and and nothing surprises you really. And and even back in them days, nothing. You know, you never knew. You know, on on deadline day at, at the transfer deadline day back in them days, who would be staying, who would be going? It was just, you know, I think Stevie Lowndes moved on at, at the last day of, of the season, yeah. so you know anything could uh, could happen. Um, but yeah, you, you you don't like to see people leave the football club, but you understand it because that's the nature of the game. You know, it's the industry that we're in, and we know that you could be at one club for five, six, seven years, but then you could only be there six months if, if someone comes in for you and. And you're not happy at one club, especially um, back then. I think now it's a little bit more um, sort of, um, I'd say, a little bit more secure because of, of the, the contractual thing and the players and the new Bosman rule with the contracts and everything. So, you know, the players have, have got a, a big say at what goes on now. Back, back, back in our day, it was the clubs. The clubs had the say in everything, really. Mm. Do you think that as well that the gaffer has seen that you know, Teddy Teddy actually scored a few goals this season as well? Could could you really see at this point that Teddy was moulding into something special? Uh, yes, yeah, I think so, and, and I, I think that's the uh, the big thing with it was you know he had he had Fash, he had myself, he had Teddy, and and that perhaps he's thinking well I don't need to uh, to uh, other centre forwards, I need to build perhaps a, buy a centre half or get a centre half in or a midfield player or somebody else. So, you know, there's no point having five or six forwards at a club. So, yeah, I think he weighed up the options, George, and thought, right, this is the best way to go. And, uh, you know, that's why he just let Kevin and uh, Dean go. Yeah, I said he was top scorer again this season and then Fash got 13. Just behind Fash is a player called Robert Wilson. He scored 12 goals in 38 yeah. games. It was the only season yeah. he had for us. He came yeah. a, a long-time player from Fulham and then moved on to Luton. But, yeah, you know what? he yeah. must have been a quite decent player, but only one season at the club. Yeah, he, he had um, uh, Will, Wilson, Robert Wilson, came from Fulham, midfield player. He um, he had a bad, um, he had a, uh, him and his wife, they, they had a carb carbon monoxide poisoning. They, 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 were, they, they had a bad, um, uh, bad time of it. Um, and that put him off football for a long, long time. So I think, you know, he was out of the game for a while from that. He, he's fine now and everybody's fine now, but it, it sort of, it sort of knocked him back a little bit, but he was a great player, Wilf. He was um, a good midfield, attacking midfield player. Um, and again, I think because of this, he moved on and um, and tried to um, get you know the, the bad sort of times that he had off the football field, out of the out of the way, and um, um, and wanted to concentrate on football. Yeah, Jesus, man, that's really bad. Uh, out of this season, I picked yeah. a couple of um, couple of games. I don't know if you. Want to pick some out yourself, but the Crystal Palace home win three two. I think you scored that day as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's always uh, nice to score against your old uh, your old team. I think I, I did it the, the year before um, at Sellers Park uh, when we beat them two one in the cup in front of the the our Millwall supporters. That, that's one of the best feelings I've ever had in uh, in football scoring that goal that that day at Palace um, when we beat them two one. Um, and then all that bank, the Holmesdale uh, Road end of, of Sellers Park, as it was in, was absolutely just jam packed with middle supporters. And I remember the ball coming across and headed in the in the bottom corner and, and beating them two one, and that was brilliant. Honestly, it give you goose pimples uh, when when um, when he scored that. But it was, uh, yeah, it's um, a lot of good games, a lot of good games, and um, it's, it's funny how things stick in your mind and only certain things. And other games that like you mentioned, the Dart for one before that. Is that how you you just don't don't remember them? You don't remember them. So, you know, it's it's this my career is about five hundred games. So it's most probably only about hundred I can remember. I should think. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we, we do we do all right that season. We establish ourselves in the championship. 
the 86, 87 season, you're completely out of favour. Now, you'll have to help me out again, sorry, at this point. Is this the point that George leaves and the doc comes in? Yeah, I had a bad injury. Uh, I remember is is um at the end of the the previous before George went to Arsenal in the summer. He went. I don't know what year that was, Dan, but he, he went. He went in that summer, and just before my my contract was up, coming up to the end of the season, and I had planned to go on a, a golfing holiday to um to Greece or somewhere, and I said George, I'm going on a golfing holiday at the end of the season. He said, Yeah, fine, no problem, blah blah blah. Um, so anyway, Wales, I, I was playing for Wales. So Wales rang me up and said, come to Canada. It's a trip to Canada, three week tour in Canada, play two games, three games out there, play three games out there and come and play with us. So George came to me and I said, George, I, well, I went to George and I said, George, I, I've got my holiday. I said, but I don't want to do my contracts up and everything. Um, and um, uh, um, you've got to play for Wales. I, I, I've got a chance to go to Canada to play for Wales. And he went, Go on your holiday. He went. Go on your holiday. He said it's only a, it's only a, it's not a World Cup or anything. He said don't don't go to, to Canada. He said you're out of contract. He said you don't, the last thing you want to do is get injured. He said if you get injured then you you bollocks basically. He said so don't 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 get injured. Go on your golf and holiday. So I went up. Oh, uh, okay. So anyway, me being me, I went to play for Wales. I thought no, I want to play for my country. I want to play for my country. So go to Wales. Last game of, of, of the of the tour, I get injured. I do my knee in. My knee just, I, I do a cartilage in my knee. Um, the last game in Canada, um, and, and the last night in the hotel, I remember lying there with my leg up, I thinking, what have I done? What have I done? During the time I'm in Canada, George goes to Arsenal. He leaves me all, goes to Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Now, to this day, I don't know, I've never asked George, but to this day, I don't know whether he thought, look, just, just hang on a minute, don't go. I might get another job and I might take you with with me. And that to the day, because they when I when I got injured, Arsenal went and signed Perry Groves from Colchester, the same kind of player that I was. Um, and I, I to this day th- still think that perhaps George had me as, as perhaps going with him to to Arsenal. I really do. Sorry, the, the previous two seasons you'd scored 40 goals. Yeah. So you was well with yeah. him. Maybe think that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think he, he might have, you know, had me as just, you know, just to come and see what, what I could do there or whatever. But but he signed Perry Groves um, during uh, when he when I was injured, and then and then obviously I was out of contract at Millwall, mm. and I was injured, so um, I I was on a week to week until I got fit. So I was on a week to week contract because because and then uh, Doherty came in, didn't he? Um, yeah. John well, Doherty came in. Maybe things were different then, but why had Millwall? Before the injury, why had Mill would allowed your contract to run out? Why exactly, they... and and this this is why 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 that it's different now. It's different yeah. now to what to what you know. Even now, players are getting extensions on their contracts, and they got two years left. <laughs> you know, now in them days, in them days, you 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 wait until the third week of April to see if they renew in your contract. Oh. It, it, honest, it was it was ridiculous. So anyway, I I'm, I was out of contract. Um, and uh, I was injured, so I, took, I went in every day to the den on my own, um, training on my own to get myself fit, get myself fit. Um, and then I got myself fit and I went on loan to Swansea um, and played two, three games at Swansea when Terry Orrath was the manager and scored a couple of goals. And they wanted to sign me. And I was going to sign on the Sunday. I was going to sign on the, on the Sunday. Oh, sorry, on the Monday. And um, on the Sunday, um, Keith Peacock rang me up from Gillingham and said, look, will you sign for, come and sign for Gillingham? Mm. And I lived in the area in Gillingham, my family, all in school and everything. So it was, so I met Keith and um, they bought me from, from Millwall. So that's, that's, and and because Doherty didn't want anything to do with me. He he didn't want me, you know, he wanted me to go. He didn't, he didn't want to wait for me to get fit. I don't think he uh, fancied me being there, so. That was, you know, that's fine. So I moved on. Yeah. Sorry. So first, first I'm going to go back to what you said there in that, a lot amongst all that. If George, if you hadn't got injured in Canada and George Graham mm. had to come and took you, he would have took you for free then because we allowed your contract to run down. Would that, is that how that would have worked? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The amount of goals that's, that's... in those last three seasons, he would just go. Yeah. 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 And, and, and it's, it, it, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Uh, like, you know, I, uh, I remember when I first signed the the first initial deal, 
at at uh, Millwall with George. I signed it and agreed it. Then the next one, I think I signed a year later for a two year deal. I didn't even I didn't even discuss money or nothing. I just so happy that George wanted to sign me. I went up and went the other side. Two year two year contract. Happy happy to play football. Just happy to play football for Millwall. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, so it, it don't matter what it, I can't even remember what it was. It was next to nothing anyway. But you just loved the game of football. You just wanted to play. 60 goals in three years. Your goal bonus yeah. alone would have bought you a lovely house or something. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But like I say, it was it, it was funny because, you know, you, you'd win a game on a Saturday or I'd have a bit of a goal bonus and it'd be lovely. A goal and have a, could afford a Chinese or something. You know, and have, a, have, a, have a, a bottle of wine or something. You know, it was just, it was ridiculous, the, the difference, the difference between now and then. You know, but that's where you the, the respect is there. You know, we have we had the, the, the discipline and respect of what we were doing. You know, to win a game of football meant so much to us because it meant we could have a little luxury in in our lives. You know, and um, and you know, I'm not saying that it's not like that now because the, the 99% of players, uh, you know, are like that now. They love their game of football. They love playing football, but it does help when you're earning forty, fifty thousand pound a week, I suppose. It does, mate. So, you, you was a lot more honest then. That's mm. why you're getting 57 games in in a season. Do you know what I mean? In this day and age, people yeah. are around the floor for fun. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you didn't know any different, Dan. You didn't know any... That, that's what it was. You know, that's what we played. That's what we trained for. That's what we played for. So, we, we you know, that that's what we we loved. We loved going in in the mornings. We loved sitting and having a cup of tea and having a crack with the lads. You know, that was part of it. Mm. I spent more time with the players than I did with my wife. You know, during that time, because it, it was it was brilliant. You know, it was brilliant. Loved it, loved it. And like an Alan, like walks. You know, I I, I was with him at Millwall. And I was with him at Gillingham. He, he was my like my roommate when we used to stay away for ten years. Like you know, so we were together uh, all the time on away trips. You know, and everything. So you know, it was great. It was a great crack. We loved it. Loved it. Let's move on to the dock. He's so. You left. Did you leave during the summer? Or did you actually? I think you started the season as a Millwall player, didn't you? You you, you come off the bench yeah. once, and the doc had yeah. gone with you. Said he didn't think he fancied you. He'd gone obviously with Michael Marks this season, who scored eleven, yeah. and Teddy Sheridan scored sixteen. Did you have the chat with the doc about you? You know, I've got injured on the tour. What's what's my situation at the club? Yeah, and um, he said like you've got to prove your fitness. You've got to prove your fitness, and then we'll we'll get something. We'll we'll offer you a contract, or uh, we'll try and sit down and do something. So I got myself fit, but um, he really, um, he, he just, he didn't, he didn't sort of come back to me anymore. He, so he, all he did, he, he said, look, we put you on a week to week until someone comes in, someone comes in for you. And that's when, um, um, obviously, uh, I went to Swansea on loan and then, um, and then Gillingham and then obviously signed at Gillingham. Yeah, but you can't, you can't say it didn't work out for Docky in the long run, but that's a risky game to play. Your top scorer over the last three seasons got you 50 goals. The fans must have been thinking, why the fuck have we let him go to Gillingham? What's going on here? Surely. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, what, uh, what it was. I, I really couldn't tell you. It, 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 was, it was funny how, it, as you say, Dan, it got to the stage where my contract run itself out. You know, you think something might, might have been done, but I, I don't know why, why that happened. Um, but at the end, they, I, I think what they did, they put me on a, a week to week so that they then would, um, uh, they'd have to take a, uh, get a fee for me. So, mm. you know, they could say, right, you're off and that's it. The end you go and I could assign for anybody, but they kept me on, we keep you on a week to week contract until I think they must, what they must have done. And I think it, uh, what they did was offer me the same contract as I had before. But I, I didn't want to take it because, you know, I, I thought I was worth more than that at that time. So with them offering me at the same contract, that meant that if I didn't take it and a club come in, they would have to um, agree a fee for me to go. And that's what happened. You know, Gillingham came in and they agreed a fee, which was next to nothing really. It's only about 20, 30 grand or something. And, and I, went, I went, to, went to Gillingham. Went to Gillingham, scored a lot of goals, mate, didn't you? Yeah, I scored uh, 104 down there in 280 games or something. So, yeah, yeah. Again, I I enjoyed my time down there. Um, as a you know, I've spent nearly 20 years at the club in what you know every from a player uh, to a coach to a community officer to uh, everything. Um, so I've done to the first team manager. So it's it's been yeah, it's been good. And I you know I lo I love the club. I love the club like I do Millwall. I think that the two 
clubs that, uh, well, the three clubs I played for, I still, I've got great memories at every one. So mm. um, it's it's great to be um, um, to be uh, being a part of them, really. Mm. So you recently managed Gillingham, as, as most people will know, very recently. But you're now the manager of yeah. my hometown club, Well United. Yeah, um, Mark Goldberg asked me to um, when the old manager went uh, about six weeks ago. He said, um, "We're bottom of the league. Uh, will you come and and help out? And uh, will you become our manager?" I said, "Yeah, I'll come and." I suppose I've known Mark. I've been on Mark a long time, and um, and unfortunately the season has has ended now. But we we had three games and um, um, we won one, draw one, and lost one against three of the top sides in the league. So, ironically, it, it was quite good. Um, and I'm just disappointed that the season has ended because I think we could have we could have done something. But um, you know, it's always next year, and we look forward to that. And uh, it'll be a challenge. I love a challenge. I love managing, I love coaching, and, uh, you know, we'll give it a go next year. Well, as always, mate, hopefully we can get um, a little meal or 11 down there, maybe in the summer, fans can come back. be lovely. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. I, uh, you know, that's something that we want to do, especially when all the fans come back now, uh, obviously for next year. look, It's looking that way, touch wood, and hopefully that, that's the way it's going to go. And, uh, you know, we can't wait. You know, I think everybody in football can't wait for the crowds to come back and, um, you know, sooner the better because it's been a... It's been terrible without them. Really has been. Yeah, it's been shocking, mate. It's been shocking. So getting back to me, well, I yeah. just finished with the same yeah. questions. There is an extra question because I sent you a photo this morning. Can you explain the photo? Yeah. What, what, I'll put it on the screen now. Here's yeah, the it's, um, yeah, it is uh, the one, um, uh, the cold blow lane one sitting on the, the I remember it was, it was a winter. It was, it was a real cold winter. And we were playing, I think, in an FA Cup tie. Um, and that it was it, something to do with the sun. I don't know who we were playing at the time and um, in the FA Cup, but he said, can we come and do um, a photo and sit you under the cold blow lane in because of the weather is so bad with the wellies and all that. Yeah, so, well, yeah, so well, yeah, wellies on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wellies and a hat on and a scarf. It was because cold blow lane and it was freezing cold and the, and the, the snow was coming and it might have been... Um, that I might have been called off because of the snow or whatever, but it was something to do like that anyway. Oh, something that well, the, the okay. paper wanted to do. Mm. It's, not, it's not one you expect to come across. I mean, I come across a lot of you scoring goals. No. But what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Yeah. No, it's funny. I, when I saw it, this, the, when you put it on there this morning and had a look, and uh, that's the first thing my wife said. She said, I remember that. She said, you, it was a wind, cold winter and you were playing in the cup and they wanted the sun, the newspaper wanted to do something. And I remember there was that one, and there was another one with me and Fash. And Fash had a, a, a um, lion's outfit on, lions uh, dressed as a lion, because we were playing, um, uh, who we were playing? Enfield, I think, in the cup. And uh, we, had, we had to go to a zoo. We went to a zoo to do a, a promotional thing. So Fash had to dress up in a, in a lion's uh, outfit, which was, uh, that was, that's the other one I remember, the two photos I remember. But. God, you're looking at 30 odd years ago now, Jesus. Well, yeah, a long time ago. If you can remember back and pick out some of your favourite goals from your time at the club, there was a few. Um, yeah, I think that the one I, I mentioned is the, the one, um, the header against Chelsea in the League Cup at the Den. It was a, I got a photo of it and to this day, I'm jumping over um, the two centre-halves there and, and heading his wickies in goal and and I'm, I'm so high off the ground, I can't believe it myself. Because I'm not very tall. I'm only five foot ten, but I used to have a great leap. And I used to score a lot of goals in my head. And that was one that, that stuck out for me, was a, a, a great goal. And the other one was down at Portsmouth. We played Portsmouth down on a Tuesday night. And uh, we won 2-1. And uh, it, it came out about five yards outside the box. And I chested it, kneaded up and volleyed it. And it went past Alan Knight in the top corner. Uh, so I remember that one as well. So, yeah, there was a couple of um, couple of good ones. Brilliant. Um, yeah, there's a few, there's a few, but they're the two that stick out in my mind, really. If you could um, pick a best memory, like one, not necessarily a goal, from your time at the club, you go with Chelsea again, I suppose. Yeah, on a football on the football side of it, I think um, yeah, the Chelsea at um, Stamford Bridge at the end in the dressing room at the end of the game with um, celebrating with George and Fashion. Again, I've got pictures with Les Briley and everything that the Sun did 
uh, they were they were great nights. But the big the thing for me was actually signing signing for George uh, the first time I signed for Millwall because I was at Palace. I was going nowhere at Palace. Alan Mullery didn't want me there at all, and I thought oh, I I don't know what I'm going to be doing. And then George coming to get me and telling me and he wants to sign me at Millwall. I think that was the, the best the best ever. Um, to know that someone still had faith in you as a player um, and to sign a contract for a club that you knew had great history and great supporters. And uh, it was great. Um, it was fantastic for me to go and sign for George. Yeah, man. Right, um, he showed the faith and rightly so, mate. He scored plenty for us and then you went on and scored plenty for Gillingham. I always yep. finish with one yep. last question. I won't keep you any longer. One last question. Yep. If you could go out tonight for one, low, one last day of goal from one last night out with three of your old Mill teammates... You can only take three with you. Who are you taking? Um, I'd take Alan Walker, uh, Paul Sanson. Yep. And I would take another one that I haven't seen for ages and ages, and that's Bill Roffey. <laughs> Do you remember Bill? Do you remember Bill Roffey, the left back? Growing up, Bill Roffey was like mm. slang for coffee, and now I've searched it. I know, exactly. He's actually a Mill player, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. And I've not brought it up yet in an interview. He was, what was he like, Bill then? <laughs> Oh, he was brilliant. He was so funny. He was just funny. Do you know, he went out to um, America and he had um, he, he became a kicker for uh, Dallas uh, Dallas Cowboys or Dallas, one of the, the American football teams. He went out to America and, and became a kicker for him. Uh, so, so he had to train and he had to read all the book and all the plays and everything. I remember him telling me. He was such a character. He was so funny. He was so funny. But obviously, Alan... I still see Alan now, but you know, like we used to have so many great times and great fun. So, um, but yeah, them three and Sam Paul Sanson, obviously the goalkeeper, he lives locally as well. And, um, you know, Sammy was uh, uh, still a good friend. So, yeah, but it's all honesty, you'd have, you'd have any of them, any of them, you take them all because um, football is all about um, characters, it's all about uh, banter and just enjoyment. And, um, you know, I think a little bit of that has gone out of the game, um, but certainly from our our era, it was uh, it was there and uh, there in abundance, and uh, we really loved it. We loved our time there, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thanks so much, and all the best at uh, Willing Thank United. You. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you.